It's been a very, very long time, but finally the NLW podcast is back on the air. It's NLW, you know what the deal is. I'm sure you've probably listened to this podcast before. Um, If you haven't, uh, I've been on a bit of a break with a bunch of stuff like filming and everything, and I was only planning on taking a break from the podcast for like a week or two, and now I check and it's been like two months, so uh, yeah, oopsie. Uh, But I did want to get back and do this because I find it fun, you know. Um, I've had a lot of people kind of reach out to me and it's been really nice, so um, thank you to everyone who sent kind of kind messages in response to one of my last videos where I talked about my kind of motivation for pick fedding going down a little bit. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of, it's very reassuring to know that people are kind of experiencing the same thing that I am. And, you know, I appreciate the the kind words and yeah, I would agree a hundred percent with a lot of what people have said. Maybe I am uh, kind of, I don't know, stretching myself too thin, as I said, but again, that's a video that you can watch. It's on the channel now. Um, it's called my pick fed motivation is low again so uh if you want to hear me talk more about that you can listen to that video um but with this podcast again i'm gonna do the same kind of standard format that i've done uh over the past few months with this podcast where i talk a bit about what i'm working on a bit about what wrestling has been happening this week and then i'll talk about you know wrestler and match of the week and i'll also um well i say i'll try and answer a question but i think i've covered a lot of them in that Q and A video, so um, I might do just like a, a general question that people might have had, uh, but we'll see. So yeah, starting off with this episode, what I'm working on. So I'm working on a bunch of stuff at the moment. Uh, I didn't want to stretch myself too thin, as I said in that pick fed motivation video. What I've been trying to do is really stay on top of my work and kind of organise a little bit more um, because I've started working. Um, my day job, well, it's not really a day job, I'm working, uh, nights now, so, you know, I'm coming home quite late, uh, so there's not really a lot of time, uh, after I come home from work, but at least now I've got more time during the day to film NLW and things of that nature, really, so I've got a bunch of stuff that I've filmed in advance, like I said in that, uh, pick fed video, where I filmed... NLW 104 I've gotten up to. I've started filming NLW 105. So that's kind of in the books at the moment. In terms of what other stuff I want to film, Metal Wrestling is the next big uh, show that I'm filming. So it'll be episode two of that. And then after that, it'll be Metal Wrestling's Revival pay-per-view. But before then, I want to get filming on uh, some NLW 24-7 stuff. So for the Patreon. And I've got this big, big show planned where I'm going to get like 10 matches on it. Again, it's ambitious and I'm not going to overwork myself. You know, it'll be out when it's out. But again, it's just something fun to kind of get back into it a little bit because I feel like, you know, with with figure photography and pick fed and things of that nature, you do tend to get a little bit rusty quite quickly if you've taken a break from it. So this is just me trying to get back into it a little bit and just make some fun matches because there's one where I've got like a a hardcore six-pack challenge. I've got a ladder match to do, an Ironman match to do. There's... um you know, a bunch of cool matches that I want to make. And if I can make this big, big event where I've got all these cool matches on it that the Patreon guys have kind of requested, I think that it'll hopefully rekindle my, uh, not my passion, but definitely will get me more motivated because I've got a goal and an end goal in mind. You know, this is a project that I'm picking up and I, I really want to kind of move forward with it. Like I've got the big AW stage, which I'm using for a show for the first time, and I think that I want to kind of revamp NLW twenty four seven. But again, I, I I did kind of talk about this in the last video, um, like the pick fed motivation video. So um, you know, I won't ramble on too much about that. In terms of what's happening on this channel as well, I'm really just kind of enjoying the process at the moment, just filming a bunch of different kinds of videos. You know, the reviews, the figure photography videos. Like you know, sometimes I'll do a raw review and a SmackDown review. Uh, where I'll take pictures of the action, and sometimes I won't. You know, my my main thing now is, like, not trying to kind of commit to anything too hard and end up cancelling it. Like, I'm not going to hype up a big new series where I've got all of these plans for, you know, uh, Raw Ruthless, for instance. I thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll do this every couple of weeks. And really, I think, as fun as it was to do, and as different as it was to do, I really should just be focusing on the NLW and the 24-7 stuff, honestly. So that's probably where my main priority is going to be moving forward. Like I'm not going to be doing any um, stupid extra videos. I really want to like 
focus my full attention on these um, NLW and NLW 24-7 matches, as well as metal wrestling. Um, so, yeah, like, as well, I'm kind of preparing for the uh, the birthday of NLW, which turns 10 years old in well on the 8th of june which is depending on when you're listening to this on youtube it'll be tomorrow um and i am kind of not getting existential about it but just kind of thinking that oh dude like 10 years i've been doing this now and probably only like a year of it has been any good (laughs) but uh, it's just me kind of being um critical of myself really uh like i think the the kind of journey that I've been on with it, I did not expect it to last more than a couple of months, really. Um, but now to see that I've kind of stuck with it for ten years and I've grown this kind of community around it, it's so sick, honestly, man. Like I'm really like grateful for you guys' support and um, just uh, I cannot thank you enough for like being there and kind of watching what I'm putting out because I'm having a lot of fun doing it and the fact that you guys are enjoying watching it too really does mean. A lot to me so you know enough of the cheesy stuff out of the way you know that's what i'm working on i've got a couple of videos as well in the pipeline moving forward as well um so that was the nlw what i'm working on portion of the podcast now we come on to the figure news part of the podcast and a very busy week for figure news of course over double or nothing weekend we saw the AEW kind of renders and releases that are upcoming so they've announced a bunch of lineups, which include, you know, the likes of Butcher and the Blade um, and more. And a, couple, a lot of pre-orders went up too. Um, for example, Unrivaled 10 went up over the weekend. We've also got some new commentary figures. So we've got JR, Tony Schiavone and Excalibur. And you know what? I, I don't know what other people are thinking. I'm sure they're not going to be um, flying off the shelves, but I definitely want to get myself uh, a JR figure, a Tony Schiavone, and certainly an Excalibur. I think that... Um, you know, especially in the suits as well. There's a bunch of different kind of fix-ups you can do with that, so that's cool. Um, the Owen Hart figure as well we've seen over the weekend, the Luminaries. Um, that looks really cool. Uh, cannot wait to see. Also, customization uh, with the AW figures is quite good. So you can mix and match it, and I think there's going to be a lot of cool Owen Hart customs coming out of that figure release. We also saw the Rampage uh, Elite Ring, or the Scale Ring, come out which looks really cool and it comes with a sting figure so i might get that as well again it's just you know pricing really um but what else do we have we had the announcement of an elite greatest hit series so some of the classic figures some of the best of um that ray mysterio with the skull mask looks sick uh the bam bam bigelow as well as one that i want uh, but again once we see um kind of the updated releases of them i'll be interested to see um if they're like the exact same or if they're a little bit different who knows uh, but that's for that. And we also saw some new um, mock picks of the Elite 94. So, you know, you've got the MSK ones, which look cool. Uh, the Edge one looks decent. And then we come on to uh, this Bret Hart, and they can never get a Bret Hart face scan right, it seems. They've got the Chase and the regular ones, and I would buy this if it weren't for the fact that the head, just, it's not, you can't compare it to the other figures, because it, it's just not, it's just so basic. Like, I don't think they're ever going to get a Bret Hart which looks like him, you know, whether it's the fact that they're not scanning him properly or they just can't get an accurate sort of scan. I don't know what it is because it's so weird. Like, every Bret Hart they've brought out, like, the attire's been fire and then the, the head scan's just been, you know, leaving a lot to be desired, really. So, very odd, very odd head scan there, but... Again, like, I can't really complain. They're bringing out a lot of cool figures, so um, rip my wallet, I guess. Um, but we'll see. I, I, I am making a pledge to not spend as much on wrestling figures now. I'm kind of only buying ones I need, like, kind of the new ones in the line and the promo attires that I can use for NLW. So that's figure news. What about wrestling news? Well, in the world of wrestling, we've just had Hell in a Cell. We've got the injury to Cody Rhodes, and by the time you're watching this, he's probably come out on Raw and given a timetable to his return. Um, if not, like, just the fact that he went out there, and I talked about it in my Hell in a Cell review as well, which you can check out on the channel now. Um, just the fact that he was able to go out there and have a, a kick-ass match with basically one arm is insane. And, you know, you do worry a little bit if it sets a precedent of people getting injured and thinking they have to kind of 
outwork everyone and get out there and just put on a show. Because honestly, I think Cody could have missed it and no one would have blamed him at all. But once he kind of revealed the extent of the injury, whether it looks worse than it actually is or not, um, you know, I've been reading into it a little bit and it, it does seem like it was inadvisable for him to wrestle. But at the same time, you can't really do anything, any more damage. But I think I was watching a, a doctor's video on it where he was talking about, um, forgive me, I can't remember the name of the, the channel, but saying that, yeah, the injury itself can't get any worse, but the fact that you've got like a, a lack of mobility in it means that you're relying on other muscles. So, you know, you could tear a shoulder from that or kind of like strain another muscle in your neck, maybe, or your back, um, just because you're overcompensating for your, your busted arm. So, yeah, a, a dangerous kind of situation. But throughout the match, honestly, I think the only real, um, the only real bump that was like, oh, you know, was. A, the first Cody Cutter, and B, was the, the buckle bomb through the table. Uh, but they recovered for it really well, and credit for Seth, to Seth Rollins, rather, for keeping Cody safe. Like, that was absolutely insane stuff. So, big, big props. Um, we also had AEW Double or Nothing the weekend before, and that was a fantastic show. Um, and, of course, the news as well in the week that CM Punk is uh, not relinquishing the championship, but going away for foot surgery, which it really sucks, man, because uh, he was on a roll and you could tell this was going to be like the run of his career. So it's a damn shame, but you know, these things happen. At least now we're going to get an interim champion. And I've seen the kind of the debates online as to whether or not interim challenges or champions are a good or a bad thing. And I'm personally of the opinion that they're a good thing just because um, one reason and it's Finn Balor, man, like you saw when they took that title off of Finn Balor and he was gone for months. Um, just the fact that his stock went down, and it's not not through no fault of his own, but his momentum was really stunted by the fact that he got the title taken off him and he didn't get a rematch for it. So even if they'd brought him back uh, for a big match against Brock Lesnar, I think that um, you know they could have done an undisputed angle where they, he Brock became the undisputed Universal Champion. But yeah, I, I mean, I get why companies would strip people of the title, but I think it's a breath of fresh air. You know, the UFC do it and people are kind of... You know, they think that they can just um, strip them of the belt if they can't compete. But I think that it actually works better in the world of wrestling, in my view, because it's not real. So you can do you can do those kinds of angles. And whenever CM Punk comes back, that sets up a massive match down the line. I have an inkling that they're going to do Mox versus Tanahashi at Forbidden Door, uh, just based on the fact that that's been the feud that's been built up and we've been expecting it to be happening on AEW TV for months. And I don't think, aside from a couple of multi-man matches, it's happened in New Japan. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. So to do it on this big pay-per-view in the main event for the AEW title, I think would be a big deal. And also you can put the title on Mox um, because he's already held the title. So it doesn't kind of diminish um, anyone. Else. For instance, if you know, if Brian Danielson was to win it, it would be a bit of an, uh, not a letdown, but like he, it's not the it's not the real title. So... I don't know, you'd want him to win the the belt when it's, it's legit, so to speak. So I think Moxley would be the best choice here. Um, unless they do Tanahashi. I mean, that would be a that'd be a curveball and a half, wouldn't it? But we'll see. Because um, Tanahashi's facing Goto, and the winner of that will face uh, whoever on um, Forbidden Door. And there's no way that... I, well, I don't think that Goto is going to be main event in Forbidden Door, but that's just my opinion. So we also had the final of the best of Super Juniors. It, it was an all right match. You had Hiromi Takahashi and El Desperado. Uh, it was really slow for the first like 20 minutes, but then really picked up towards the end. Um, and Hiromu is going to face Taji Ishimori. Um, you know, I think that Despi's been pushed pretty well, but I think he could have won this tournament here and really... Um, but maybe it's too soon for him to get his revenge. I think that Despi will probably get his title back uh, around Wrestle Kingdom, if not. Um, if not now, rather. So that's been happening there. We also had uh, Stardom's Flashing Champions last week, which was a great show. Um, you know, I recommend getting Star Stardom World for just this month to watch that show. Um, you know, Kari Sane's on it if you're if you're a casual fan, and then it will kind of take you down the rabbit hole of more um, Joshi stuff. And that's what I've been kind of getting into at the moment, trying to get into the um, the scene over there. So I've been watching a bit of Stardom, a bit of Tokyo Joshi Pro with my Wrestle Universe. So some good stuff over there, man. Like uh, you've got Dominion coming up as well as the Cyber Fight Festival, which is a big joint show between. Tokyo Joshi, Pro Wrestling Noah, and DDT. Um, again, I've just been watching a bunch of old DDT stuff on the uh, on the Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Universe app. What's this? I was, um, I've just spotted another video, interesting video here. 
coming up from DDT. So I'll have to check that out. But the yeah, it's a great subscription service, just if you're trying to get into um, like more Japanese wrestling and stuff like that. And you can kind of, again, branch off and look into more things other than New Japan. I think it's a, quite an interesting service, so would recommend getting Wrestle Universe. It's pretty cheap. Um, what else has been happening? Not really, not really anything off the top of my head, so I guess we can go to the match and wrestler of the week. Wrestler of the week has to be Cody Rhodes. I mean, flipping hell, man. Like, trying to fight through that injury is absolutely insane. Just trying to... Yeah, I can't even fathom, like, that uh, the amount of pain he must have been in. Like, obviously, it probably looks... Well, I would hope that it looks worse than it actually is because it looked disgusting. So Cody Rhodes, by far, wrestler of the week for sticking it out and, you know, hoping that his recovery goes well and he can take some time off because he's been... um like on a roll like doing all the house shows for wwe and then before that being one of the top guys in AEW, like the the party don't stop for cody rhodes i think he needs a bit of time off to really recuperate and enjoy his time off and he'll come back a bigger star so it's okay um my match of the week though is going to be from AEW rampage it was the young bucks and the lucha bros um they just had a kick-ass match and yes it was a spot fest it was it was a total spot fest but i loved it all right and i loved the fact that you know, there wasn't really, there was a little bit of psychology, but not really, like not really much psychology to speak of. It was just quick, quick, quick. It was live as well. So you could hear genuine fan reactions um, for about 10 minutes or so, just busting out all the greatest hits of their rivalry and all that good stuff. You know, a TV match, which cut out all the filler. They were just diving all over the place. Um, and I think the Young Bucks winning when they snatched Penta's mask, super kicking him in the face and then pinning Ray Phoenix with the Meltzer driver. So yeah, if you've not seen it yet, go back and watch AEW Rampage just for that match alone. In fact, the whole show is pretty fun um, with what with uh, Punk's speech as well as Athena's debut. Good stuff there. Um, so that's that for the match and the rest of the week. And we've got the, the final segments now. It's the NLW updates as to what's coming up this week. We've got the Patreon shouts out after that and then question of the week. So NLW updates, what's going to be happening on the channel this week? On the main channel, we've got the Money in the Bank All-Star match from NLW 24-7. That'll be on the Wednesday, which is coincidentally the 10-year anniversary of NLW. And then after that, it's going to be the TLC match this Saturday, completely stop motion. That's going to be, I would say that's probably one of my favorite matches I've ever done. If any match can kind of rekindle my passion for, you know, this kind of fedding and stuff like that, it's that one. It's got a bunch of crazy spots in it. I cannot wait for you guys to see it um this week as well on this channel i don't know man i think i'm just gonna go with the flow and see what happens i'd like to say i'm gonna release a couple of videos here and there um as i've been trying to do more regularly maybe a review or two here or there from a raw smackdown but again like don't hold your breath on that it's just what i'm feeling up to during the day really so yeah i can't really make any promises for this channel anymore all i can say is i'm hoping to get the podcast up on a regular basis now and um yeah, after TLC on the main channel, I don't know what the schedule's looking like. I'm just going to try and, again, just see what happens, really. Um, just kind of go with the flow and see how my schedule kind of fits around my filming. So, that's the NLW updates. We'll do the Patreon shouts outs. So, here we go. Thank you very much to Kid Zap, Outros World, Devin Dowlin, Ryan McCarthy, Cupid, Anthony Hill, PTW Animations, Cringe God, Flynn Lampkin, John, and Remy Montoya. Thank you all for being patrons. Um, if you want to jump over onto the Patreon, help out the podcast as well by um, subscribing for just a dollar. You can get uh, an audio vo version of this podcast, which you can download and take on the go with you, as well as, you know, a bunch of um, early access stuff for NLW 24-7. So, you know, if you want to support the channel, then go over there. You can sign up for just a month if you want and then quit. Um, it's perfectly up to you. So thank you very much to all my patrons. Question of the week, really. Um... I'm going to say the question of the week um, for myself, I guess, because, you know, leave some questions in the comments as well if um, you want to be featured on this podcast. But yeah, I've seen a lot of people asking where Raw and SmackDown Ruthless have been. So I guess the question of the week can be to for everyone who's, who are asking, where is Raw and SmackDown Ruthless? Answer is it's cancelled because I'm lazy and I think I've been stretching myself too thin. And as much as I enjoyed making the matches for that show, and as much as I enjoyed doing it as like a little experiment, I think that my main focus now needs to be NLW and Metal and NLW 24-7 because those are the ones where um, 
I really want to put all my effort into now. Um, aside from, you know, these bonus videos on this second channel, they don't take as much time to make, so it's not as much of a commitment, but the ones where, you know, I've got to set up the arena, I've got to set up filming. Uh, like, at the time when I announced the series, it was feasible for me to do it, but now it's just not, like, n not worth my time, really. Like, as much as I'd enjoy it, if I had all the time in the world, of course I'd be making it still, but, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff, like, bonus matches filmed, so I might release um in fact i definitely will release at some point in the next week or so a um a compilation of what was supposed to be episode three and four of raw and smackdown ruthless but it's just going to be like a match compilation rather than actual episodes so um yeah do look out for that in the next month or two uh just just depending on how i'm feeling really with it but that's why i've kind of ended that and just really why i'm trying to focus more on keeping my mental health in check and keeping um, myself motivated because, again, if it ain't fun, there's no point in doing it and I want it to be fun and that's why I might do something random here and there like a Raw Ruthless and then end it the next day, who knows? But I think for now, the main focus is getting NLW on the right track and filming everything, heading into WrestleMania. That's my focus. So, that's the return of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Do subscribe if you enjoyed and like the video as well. Be sure to comment down below your questions for the podcast. I'd love to hear them and I might even answer one on this podcast next week. That's it from me. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you guys later.